want to, first of all, before we move on, um, kind of say a big thank you to our sponsors, to our sponsors of this meet, LBS, can we even be handled? And then also D Brown Consulting. So, um, I'll quickly introduce my team. Uh, that's D Brown Consulting. We have Emmanuel. Yes, Emmanuel is always taking video. So that we can have that on the user group. And we have Wally. And then we have David. So, and then we have David too. <laughs> So, and then, uh, of course, yes, we'll give it to So that's David, David, Wale, and Emmanuel. Thanks. And so it's going to be, we'll have to kind of put them together and do it across. So, to introduce uh, LBS, I'd like to welcome. Yeah, sure. Mr. Shaiman. Can you shake my hand? Good afternoon, everyone. Good morning, man. Good morning, man. Good morning, man. I think you know me. <laughs> um, so, this is LBS for those who are coming here, who are here for the very first time, I say welcome to you. Um, I'm sure we've heard one or two things about LBS. And then, um, okay, sometimes I hear people say, oh, it's being known by the part of the not being known by the part of the this is that, all sort of things. Um, in a nutshell, LBS is a management development um, Academy, I use the word Academy. Uh, what we simply do is to develop managers for Nigeria and Africa at large. Um, and that's why you see that the whole lot of the programs we run here are geared towards leadership and management. Um, we've been around for the, over the last 27 years. Uh, we have an alumni base of over 6,000. Uh, so I can actually tell you that there is virtually um, about over 70% of the CEOs you can talk about in Nigeria for the past 12 years. Yeah, over the uh, Currently, there are about three governors who are alumnus of the LPS, current governors. Um, I mean, the list is endless, really. Um, in terms of our product offering, they are basically put into two. So you have the degree programs and the non degree programs. Uh, the degree program is the MBA. The MBA is further put into two different cohorts. So you have the professional MBA, you have the full time MBA, you have the executive MBA, and then you have the modular MBA. Now it's, it's all the same, but the difference is in terms of flexibility. Um, flexibility in the sense that for full time MBA, you have to be here for 18 months. Um, for the professional MBA, first of its kind, is going to be starting next day, February. And so for full-time MBA, you need to have a minimum of three years of experience. And then uh, we realize that there are people who don't want to leave their jobs. Um, even though they have a three years experience, they still want to work at the same time, school, and then introduce the professional MBA. So you don't have up to seven years of experience, you have three years and above, uh, between three to seven years, the professional MBA is meant for you. We also have the executive MBA, and that's when you have seven years and above the managerial experience, same as well as the member the modular executive MBA. Now, on the flip side, we have the executive program, like I said, um, that's a non degree program. So, you're a finance person, you quickly want to, I mean, um, up your skills, financial modeling, um, what have you, uh, talk about budgeting and forecasting, a whole lot of things. We um, we offer sub programs, one to three days, maximum five days program. And then we also have what we call the executive program. So it's um, a multidisciplinary program, what do I mean by that? Um, so as, imagine if I am a general manager, for instance, I have an accountant report to me, I have a marketing person report to me, I have HR report to me. Uh, I need to be able to understand, even though I might not be a complete professional in that respect, but I need to understand what that person is saying to me. So an accountant comes here, he's accounting that I need to be able to understand the numbers to say this exactly is what that person is saying. I might not necessarily be able to have that. Marketing person comes to me, I need to be able to understand what he or she is saying. And so we have programs in that regard as well, and then there are set criteria for these programs. Um, so we have a program called Management Acceleration Program. This program is for high flyers in their respective organizations. So in our respective organizations, there are one or two people you can see that this is the future of the company. 
and then beyond the technical skills these guys have, you want to really push them up. Um, because, I mean, if you look at that leadership skills, it goes beyond just, this is what I can do. You need to, as you rise up the ladder of your career, you need to be able to manage people, and then we introduce that program called Management Generation Program. Uh, there's a program called Senior Management Program too. Uh, sorry, I'm not using my slides. I'd love to just talk. Um, yeah, that's, that's my kind of question. I don't necessarily have to use the slide. Um, so for the Senior Management Program, you have to have seven years of experience and all that. So we have a lot of programs like that. Uh, the key thing about LPS is I summarize your experience with us whenever you come in here. Uh, so the computer is one. Uh, in terms of the knowledge of the case here, it is seven to know it's a small class. You can check out LBS on the Financial Times of London, it's rated 79 of all the business groups in the world. And then we have um, the global ratings. Actually, they are about just less than 5% of the business schools in the world that has the AA, CSB, and the Hanbar rating. Uh, so we have that. Um, um, our um, association of um, what else? Association of um, Colligate at School of Business, something like that. Who, who, who body is that? It's a global body um, that certifies the world. Yeah, so we we'll remember that. We'll get that. We'll get that. That's the top of my head. Um, so we, we have those accreditations. So again, aside the companies that like I've just said, one thing we get here is the connect. So like I may mention you, I mean, just, just mention it. Mention the CEOs really. I can tell you they have done one or two things here. And so you can't outshoot the power of the network here. And that is actually our strength really. So um, welcome on board. I thank you all for coming. You have a wonderful day. So we're going to start, but just a quick one uh, on what we do. So LBS, have you seen what LBS does? And for us in uh, B Brown, just give us a quick intro. I hope I can find the slides. All right, so this is yeah. okay. This is our session sponsors. Okay, so this is just us here. Uh, yeah. um, the other uh, team, our, our other teammates, uh, and they are so. Yeah, so just wait for us, yes. So um, we do training in Deep Brown and we do consulting in payroll. And really what we do is data, anything data, we just focus on data. So we like data a lot. We think that data is a new gold and uh, we just want to, it's not just a new gold, new oil really. So and I want to use data, help people use data that they really is, use data to answer any kind of query they may have. So everybody keeps hearing about machine learning and AI. Yes, AI, machine learning, AI, machine learning. All it is is data. It's, it's just data. Because really, you have past data in the past, which is trying to understand or help you advise you on data for the future, right? So really, that's what's happening. You have machine learning algorithms. It's like you just doing detailed analytics of the past and then coming to some insights that you can use for the future. The more data you have, the better, right? So I see some people, when they're doing reporting, very large data, they get a little bit uh, timid and like, oh, it's a bit too much. The more, the better. So uh, anything you're doing, please, when they say, hey, I'm going to give you, I need you to do an annual report for the last four years. Here's your annual data. Tell them to give you daily data. Daily data. Get, get the lowest granularity. You know what I mean? Granularity of data means how, how detailed it is. Get the most detail, not the least detail. Get the most detail of your data. And then from that data, you create your reports. So really, typically, that's what we do in most of our trainings, financial modeling and stuff. And we have kind of affiliated with quite a few bodies. There's one I like, but I do financial modeling training mostly. Uh, Wally does more Excel and Power BI. I do Power BI as well. And so does uh, David. But for me, I like modeling because there's a financial modeling institute. I've heard of them. Financial modeling institute. Anybody here? Okay. Are you uh, doing the exams or you've done the exams? Uh, I am. Are you writing the next one, October? No. Okay, okay, we have a mock coming up in a couple of weeks if you are writing it. So Financial Modeling Institute is a body that I've been set up to try and help people become good in financial modeling. So it's like CFA, it's like ICANN, there are three levels. So any anybody in finance here? Anybody in you, you finance, you do PL balance sheets at least. Only a few people. Anybody collect a salary? <laughs> Everyone? Yeah, so that's your PL. 
So you have a PNL balance sheet. I hope you know that. Yeah. Each individual here has a PNL balance sheet. Yeah, yeah. In fact, some of our customers say, "Look, draw your PNL balance sheet, and it's amazing." Yeah. Who, who owns your equity? Yeah. As individuals, who owns your equity? Yeah. You do. You don't. You don't own your equity. Yeah. Equity. You know, when you start a business, you break your equity. Yeah. They started business in your parents. They started business. It was you. Yes, they brought you in. All the money they spent on you till you were 18. That's the equity. Yeah, if you are an orphan, somebody must have spent money on you. Just, look, whoever spent money to get you to 18 years old, that's equity. Which is why when they call and say, please come and do this, I'm busy. Can you come? Okay, I'm coming. Can you come? Equity. Yeah? Well, that's some digressing. So, Power BI. Power BI is not where you get more. And Power BI in Nigeria, there is this user group, Power BI user group, pbiusergroup.com slash Lagos. I think you, you saw the website. So I hope all of us have tried to register to this group. Fine. Right. Try pbiusergroup.com slash Lagos. So that's the official group for this uh, meetup. And the worldwide events like this is, are happening. And Power BI is a data analytics tool. It's a bit like Excel. How many of us use Excel? Oh, sorry, let me say, who does not use Excel? Who <laughs> <laughs> yeah. don't use Excel? You don't believe in Excel. Excel has used him a bit. No, seriously. Excel uses you first. I hope you know. The moment you start using Excel, it's a lie. Then one day you discover VLOOKUP, then you start using Excel. Who knows VLOOKUP is now outdated? Who has used XLOOKUP? The new XLOOKUP. That's another case. Yes, it's there, right? If you have the What's it called? 365. So, what Microsoft did, right? Because they were trying to build an analytics tool. So, by the way, the session has started. I, I will give you a breakdown of how it's going to be. We have our one hour starting already, so it's already started. I'm going to give you a general guide, general overview of Power BI, right? Right. So, so, you can just find the seat. Thanks. Great. So, I'll give you the history of Power BI. I think when you want to learn a new technology, you need to understand how these people built it. Yeah? You need to know what was, the, what was the idea behind it, and then what were they trying to solve. If you can get into that, then you'll be able to use it much easier. Right? And that's how I learned Excel. So my own learning of Excel is, how, what exactly were these guys thinking? Now if you crack that code, any new thing they bring will not surprise you, because you know how it connects. Right? So I'll attempt to give you a small history of Power BI and how it works. And so when you now see the demo, when we're going to have the demo, you start making sense. You really start making sense. Okay? Right. How many of us have actually built a report with Power BI? You built something yourself with Power BI. So just put your hands up very well so you see. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so the majority of us haven't built something with Power BI. You probably heard of it, you've used it, you click, 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 you haven't built it. Great. So those that have built, please, I don't think it'd be wise for to sit together. It's good to spread, but let's not disrupt the class. It would be nice for you to have spread around. If you can, I don't know if there's any free seat. Because these are two gurus here, they're sitting together. I don't know. Not guru. Self-taught. Yeah, guru, just take it, claim it. Anyway, but it's okay, don't worry. So you will be able to assist us too in talking. Because one thing about the user group is you're not learning just from one person. We're learning together. Yeah, everybody has unique experiences. And those unique experiences is what you use in public. So everybody has unique experiences. Everybody has used VLOOKUP or used VLOOKUP in different ways, completely different ways, right? So, so that's what we're going to do. Please make sure if you haven't already, just have this somewhere, right, written down somewhere so you join it later. But by the end of today, we hope that all of you have joined this group. Because once you join there, there is data for you to download. We're going to use data today. And we're closing at 12. So on the dot of 12, we're closing. So data, there's data there. If you join, now you need to download. So if I may ask, can you just raise your hands? Who has downloaded the data? Who has downloaded? Very few. Where, where? The data that when you join this group, the data we're going to use today. The data we're going to use today. Okay. 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 Okay.
we go to January is a sheet, February is a sheet, March is a sheet. That's the whole world. Was hopeless with using Excel. Unfortunately, the whole world isn't like that. Because we're using Excel as a database. When actually poor Microsoft created a database in that office suite that nobody likes, called what? Access. To give you access to data. So Excel was what they were thinking. As I told you already, you can't understand how we are, understand what they were thinking, building this thing. What they were thinking is, oh, we'll create a word, something for them to write letters and stuff like that. We call it word. And we'll create something for them to present. You know, they can use videos, audio, text, and all sorts. We call it PowerPoint. Unfortunately, we can use PowerPoint like word just time. Yeah? Then they also created an analysis tool. So this analysis tool to work with data. Let's think of a database that's not as complex as SQL Server, or SQL, eh? SQL. Access. But they didn't market access that well. But Excel, it was just nice cells, plenty cells. You can type anything in there, it takes it. Oh, wow, let's see Excel. And everybody in the world abuses Excel, right? They've abused it so much. And so it's not really, nobody's using it to its full potential. Because the key thing here is, you know, I love Chuck. I saw Chuck. I've used Chuck for like 20 years. Nice. So data. So I'm going to use Chuck. So the key thing is data. Everything starts from here. Yeah, okay. Everything starts from data. Are we together, guys? Yeah. Is it data or data, please? Okay. Yeah. What is it? Yeah. Data. Data. Yeah. data. Yeah. data. Yeah. Americans call it data. Yeah. Data. Yeah. So it's data. Yeah. <laughs> So data really is the starting point, all right? Now, for those Excel users, so the back end is there for you to use, anyhow you use it, but that's fine, but you need data. So if you really want to use Excel efficiently, you have data and then you have a report. Your, your report connects to that data. You may also have a control sheet. So all you guys that have Excel files more than three sheets is inefficient, right? It's really inefficient. Now, this data, or data, or whatever you call it, really, you have two uses for it. You either have use for the data for the past and the, the future, right? Now, when you're analyzing data in the past, you need to have structured it in a certain way for you to maximize the use of it. So Power BI, when it came, it was for analytics. Microsoft was like, we need to build an analytics tool. Then they looked at the ecosystem and they saw a billion Excel users. I think there are almost well, more than a billion Excel users. The most popular software in the world is Microsoft Word. The second is Excel. Mm -hmm. yeah? So an Excel is the analysis tool of the world, it's the BI tool of the world. Regardless of what BI tools are out there, the most number of people use Excel for analysis. You can't deny that, right? And because it's not so well used, because IT guys are so structured, they make one error, one comma, enter, error, error everywhere. And then they see these Excel guys building all sorts of interesting things, but scattered, unstructured, very, very unruly, as far as they're concerned. So they don't consider Excel a real programming tool, but it is. You can build everything in Excel. There's nothing you can't build. If I show you one or two things, here yeah, you'll, you'll see, but I'm not going to show you. So anything you can build out there, you can build in Excel. Now, so they took this and said, okay, so we have all these one billion Excel users. Let's build. Let's build that, let's make it easier for them. Let's hear what their problems are. So they created this thing called user voice. I don't know if anyone has heard of user voice. Have you heard of this tool, something out there where you can go and complain about Microsoft products? Have we heard of user voice? Okay, so user voice is there, and you go there to say, look, I don't like this feature, I don't like that feature, and what Microsoft decided to do is, okay, we're not going to build Excel 2018 or Excel 2019. So we're going to build based on what people want. And how do you know what people want? Let them complain. Make it easy for them to complain. Our engineers will go to the complaint board and say, what complaint is at the top? Who well, has said, oh, yes, this is also my problem. What has been voted to the top? And then they do it. So that's why they discovered, OK, people are complaining about data. They don't know how to kind of do their reporting with data. And they're like, well, we created get external data. So people can go and get external data and use it for their report. But people are not using it. OK, what can we do to make life easy for these guys? Let's then connect directly to their data, which is maybe SAP. Which other data source do we have? Uh, uh, SQL. SQL. We have even access on people. And then some more people, I call the four databases, just have text files. Yes? Yeah? Or CSV. This CSV we call it. CSV files, plenty. 
especially when you ask IT, IT, please give me uh, some data. I said, no, no, can you give access to our database because it's security, yeah, IT security, security policy. So ideally, you should connect to your data source. And as the data source is growing, your analysis in Excel is growing, right? So that's what they did. They said, okay, let's invent a tool where because you need to connect to SAP and because HR has a data and one Excel file, but it's only in the Excel file that HR has that data. Then another person has data in text file, another person has data somewhere, and there's a data on the internet with something, and that's how you do your report, all this data. So let's give you something called a data model, okay? Let's give you the ability to build a data model. So what's a data model? You just have data everywhere and you're trying to bring them together. And that's what we do in Excel. The moment you move from data to report, that thing in between is you kind of doing, a, you know, like scrubbing and punching your data to make a report. Because that's all we do, data, report. That journey between data and reports, sometimes it's very nice, sometimes it's tedious, sometimes it's terrible. Right? So that data model allows you to bring in, you're welcome, you bring in Excel, bring in data from SAP, bring in data from SQL, and connect them together. Right? Now, of course, they had already built access. Access could do that. But people don't like access. So it's like bringing access into Excel. So how many here use Power Pivot? Put your hand up if you use Power Pivot. Okay, if you don't, please write it down somewhere. Power Pivot, yeah? So Power Pivot is the data model I'm talking about. So they put the technology for you to connect to multiple data sources. We call it Power, so it's Power Pivot. When you have Power Pivot, it's a data model, and it's SQL, it's SQL. It's a complete animal on its own. It's a different application connected to Excel to help you connect to all the data sources in this world. You can connect to Facebook, you know. So connect to Facebook, sort data from Facebook, take data from SAP, take data from here, take data from there, and build a data model. So when you now build that data model, you will now be able to answer questions around it. Yeah, we ask the questions around that data model. But there's some rules around how you build it. And we're going to see those rules, okay? Now, once they did this in 2010, by the way, guys, they invented it in 2010. We're in 20, what now? We're in 2020 almost, right? 10 years ago. So they invented that. But they didn't market it. I don't know why they kept it a secret. So once they invented it, they said there has to be a language that you can speak to this data model. There must be a language to create. Because Excel has its own language. All the video calls and stuff you're writing is Excel language. Anything you put into itself is Excel's language. So they had to invent a language for this. Can someone shout out the name? Yes. DAX. DAX. Yes. DAX. So that's the language to talk to this data model. So in Excel, you will now write that language and then you can get things like same period last year, same period last month, versus actual, versus targets. You can bring in targets. So all the things you do in business. You can just use this DAX, write it, and then bring it into your report, and that's it. You, don't, you can go to sleep. When the new data comes, when the new data updates in your SQL and Excel file, or even a, even a text file inside the folder, you take a new text file, you drop it inside the folder, your reports are ready. So they were happy with this for a while, but then they now got complaints from the Excel community that, yes, it's very nice, very beautiful, but the issue is all our data. We can't connect to SAP, IT will not allow us, right? We can't connect to this, IT will not allow us. We, we could connect to this, but it's, there's so much restrictions in our connection. So we end up having Excel files. So most of our reporting is done with Excel files, thousands of Excel files. Some organizations have hundreds of thousands of Excel files. So think about it, especially, and is anybody in IT here? Yeah, IT. Okay, yeah, so think about this. IT says, look up guys. IT says don't connect to this, right? Security issues, isn't it? Due to security, we can't allow you to see everything here. Yes? But what do you want? Oh, I want, uh, I want this column, I want all our sales by all our sales uh, personnel for the last three years. Okay, you know what? I'll send you that as a text file, isn't it? So they send you a text file, which you put in a folder. 
And every single day, they're sending you text files for the last three years. Guess what you now have in your folder? You have everything they said they don't want to give you. You have it. So the security policy thing makes no sense, right? Because they ended up giving you the entire thing inside text files. They don't give you text files, text files, text files. So there's a, there's a complete policy issue. But that's not where we go to. You just need to know there's a policy issue around IT that you need to deal with. Because it's better for you to connect directly to this, right? Get what you need, and IT can see. Oh, Emeka has just connected. You can see. And so, okay, Emeka, you're not supposed to connect to it. Why do you need uh, Cosma data? Oh, no, I was doing a report. No, no, it's only people in this department that need Cosma data. You don't get clearance, you get clearance, you do. That's how to work. But unfortunately, we have the data in text files or Excel files, right? So we come to uh, Microsoft that look, the data is in Excel files. We need another way to kind of get it. And they're like, what's where IT guys? We've already invented that thing like 20, 30 years ago. It's called an ETL. Who knows what the ETL is? Extract transform. Extract, transform, and load. Good. So its ETL is extract, transform, and load. Now this is a very important thing. You're going to go and extract data, turn it, clean it, and then load it. But Excel people the world over have been doing that manually in Excel for years. You get data, you remove columns, you remove empty rows, you remove this, you remove that, you do this, you do that, you use concatenate, join this, join that. You become a guru in Excel, doing a very unproductive thing, cleaning your data. We do it a lot. 80% of our time is spent cleaning data, not analyzing data. Right? And Power BI is there to change that. So, extract, transform, and load. So, we need a tool. They said, okay, well, we brought it in together and they created a tool and put it in Excel. Called what? Someone shout out the name. Power Query. Power Query. This is your best friend, guys. Power Query. So, Power Query is your best friend because this tool will go and connect to any data source and clean it. When it brings it in, it can decide, oh, do you know what? I want data for only the northeast of Nigeria. When you get data for the entire Nigeria, you can tell Power Query to remove the rest and just give you northeast, yes? So that thing you were doing manually in Excel, you're now using this tool to do it. And the benefit is, as you're doing it, it is recording what you are doing. And when you want to do that same thing tomorrow, guess what? It has already been done. You don't ever need to do things twice. So if you want to know if you're inefficient, if you do something twice, just stop. I'll give you a, a web page you can go to and go and ask a question. If you do anything twice in Excel or Power BI or whatever, stop because it's inefficient. There's an inefficiency there. Kind of clear that inefficiency. So Power Query, if you don't learn anything else, go and sound any Power Query. It can save your life, literally. <laughs> Seriously. Now, if you remember, data model is called what? Power what? Power Pivot. It used a language for what? That. So they invented a new tool, a new application in Excel called Power Query. It also has its own language. It's called M. M. Yeah? By the way, it was called M. M was the code name for the language when they invented it in 2013. Then they tried to change it to Power Query language. After uproar by the community, they went back to M because M sounds cool. M was meant to be mash up, they're mashing things up. So that's the language, M. It's so kind of a difficult language to learn. The nice thing is you don't need to learn M, maybe a little bit, and you do a little bit of M today. But when you go into Power Query, you're saying, hey, you see it like Excel. I don't want this column. Right click, delete, isn't it? When you right click and delete the column, Power Query is writing the code somewhere. When you look at the code, you'll be like, what kind of classic code is this? Right? So you right click, delete. Oh, I don't want this. You do this, click, click, click. So you're just clicking buttons to clean your data or data. So that's Power Query again. So we have data model, which is when Power Query cleans all this data, cleans the Facebook data, exactly what you want, you will give it to Power Pivot. It cleans SAP data the way you want it. Gives it to who? Power Pivot. Clean the other one, gives it to Power Pivot. Power Pivot is the data model. So your data model gets all this data from Power Query, connects them together, then you go and do your report. When you finish building your report, when that data updates, your report has updated. As simple as that. So in your Excel that you have now, just have your report connected to all these data sources through Power Query. You've built a data model, 
and what they are looking at is, oh, has data come in? Okay, what's our numbers looking like? Huh, interesting. Well, I'm trying to think of something. Do you know what? Can we think? If it rains, do we make more money? Which is what I told the client once. I asked the client, so, because I trying to get them to use this. I asked the client a simple question. I said, you sell these products. I said, how well does your product sell when it rains? They're like, what kind of question is that? I said, yeah, how well does it sell when it rains? So that you know, okay, if the rainy season is very heavy this year, this is the likelihood of what we're going to sell. So our budget should be this and that. So that would be interesting. So all, what do you think you need to have to be able to answer that question? Can someone answer? Yes. I'd say you need um, historic weather data. Good, so you need historical weather data, keyboard data, yes. And then you also need the uh, sales, the daily sales. So they have that already. So you know, that's what they were doing as a business, they have that. So the new thing is historical weather data. Can we give me a hand, please? Excellent. So what you now need to do, remember the data model? The data model has data from SAP, maybe that's where the sales figures are. Data from maybe HR about the names of the sales, sales, sales team, yeah, from HR. Have data, have data here, connected it to done your report. Now someone asked a question. How well do you sell when it rains? And what he said is exactly what you need. You need data, historical weather data. So you just need maybe a daily, daily basis, day one, day two, first of January 2018, second of January 2018, all the locations in Nigeria, for this location, what was the precipitation, what was the rain, did it rain or not rain. Once you have that data, what do you do? You bring it to data model. You put it there and then you plug it. It's like you're yeah, taking a cable and plugging it. You plug it into your report or your model, and guess what? Now you can analyze everything when it rains. That's how powerful it is. So you need to learn the basics of how you build this data model, how you use Power Query to clean up your data. Okay? So that, that's all we'll do. So now, after inventing Power Query in 2013, it was working nicely, then they decided. I think around 20, is this 16 or I think around 16, that, you know, this tool is really cool. Let's take Power Pivot and that. Let's take Power Query and M, and let's create a new visualization tool called Power BI. So that's how Power BI was born. So taking this one, this one, this one, and this one, joining it together and forming Power BI. Now if you look at Excel, Excel works with cells, isn't it? Cells. I want you to think about this. Excel works with cells. Because the easiest way to know Power BI is to know Excel. Because they built it for mainly Excel users. So when they are building DAX, for example, the language, you know this language, DAX? When they are building it, they said, okay, how do Excel users do SUM? They use a function called SUM. They could have decided to use a function called ADD. They didn't, they used SUM. How do Excel do their averages? They use a function called average, to create an average. So most of the functions in Excel, the names, are the same as this new language called that. All right? So it's deliberate, just so that they can use the same, people can think the same. But how you should think when you're using Power BI is this. Excel works with cells. Power BI works with tables or columns. So take note of that. Excel works with cells. Power BI works with tables or columns. And when I say Power BI, I mean DAX, because you're going to be writing DAX. That is the language of Power BI. Yes? So Power BI works with tables or columns. So in your mind, when you're saying in Excel, equals to this times this, you cannot do that in Power BI. You can't say this times this. You have to think in a table form. Well, have a table that has um, have a table that has various prices. I have five products. It has five prices. Then I have a table, another table that has quantity of products sold. So your brain, you're thinking in table form. I have five prices and I have five quantity. What I want to do is now say total sales. How do I get total sales? I think I have to visualize before I look at it. Prices, quantity. And I want total sales. Think about it. Don't visualize in your head. Five prices like this. Five quantities like this. What is my total sale for this company? Across each. Across each. So think in Excel form. In across each, okay, what do you do? Multiply. And then you now sum. Okay, interesting. So in multiplying, you are going row by row, isn't it? Think about it. 
So you do it rule by rule, and then you now um, you now what? You now sum it, isn't it? So there are certain things you need to know. There are certain terms you need to know in in R B I, right? The certain terms. Now, if you have a table, let's assume we have the table, which is price, quantity, and then somebody thankfully created sales value, isn't it? So they've already done the multiplication. So now I have how many columns? Three. Three columns. I still want to know the total sales for that company. How do I do that? Price, quantity, sales. How about the total sales for that company? Sum the last column. Cool. So sum the last column, isn't it? So if the last column is called sales, it's equal to sum sales. Isn't it? So that's exactly what you do. It's to sum sales. And then when you are now doing your reporting, and you want to report by product A, you carry product A's name, put it there, and say, hey, what was the sales? You put it there. So you see the sales for that product. You pick another product's name, put it there. Pick the sales, put it there. You see the sales for that particular product. There's something called, what I just told you, is called filter context. I'm giving you certain terms. You will gradually keep on learning. Hopefully, if you come to our monthly meetups, you will be learning all these terms. Filter context. So there's a context around it. You'll we'll see a real quick report very soon, you'll understand it. Filter context. So whenever you're building reports, how many of you use pivot tables in Excel? Pivot tables. Okay, let me rephrase. Who doesn't use pivot table? Who has never used pivot table? Okay, good. So if you have never used pivot table, you need to use Excel a lot. Kind of. Okay, so pivot table definitely no one has using pivot tables. So pivot tables is really not Excel. It's a tool that works with Excel, but for those that know pivot tables, you understand what I mean. You drag something to pivot table, you see it listed, isn't it? You drag a value to pivot table, you see it listed. Pivot table uses filter context. So when you look at a pivot table, whatever you have in that table is a context. That's the filter context. You decide to put something in a slicer, that you've changed the context. But we're going to see that live, okay? So, so that's pivot table, filter context. Now remember I said if you have a price, you have quantity, isn't it? Hello guys, one last thing. You have price, you have quantity. You before you can get the total sales, you unfortunately you have a lot of work to do. Price, quantity. First of all, you say price times quantity. Write it down, isn't it? Then the next one, price times quantity. Write it down. Price times quantity, write it down. When you write all of those things down, you now sum. Isn't it? So those things you are doing like this, it's called row context. Can I write that down? Row context. So to understand Power BI is to understand working with tables. And for you to work with tables, you need to understand filter context, and you need to understand row context. It's good you have that general idea. You're not going to be an expert today. I know. But if you have that general idea, you know that, oh, this thing I'm doing is going to have to do like this, right? In your brain, row context. You know, this thing I'm doing, I just want to sum this. I want to average this column. You just sum it or average it. And when you bring it into your report, you use the filter context to see what you want to see. So, Power BI is a mix of this and this. And they now brought it together into a tool. Instead of using cells to now do your reporting, you use, I would just say, use PowerPoint. Think about PowerPoint. PowerPoint has a slide, right? So PowerPoint has a slide. PowerPoint doesn't have cells. I hope you know that. It's just a slide. So PowerPoint has a slide, and then you bring things in, you bring some shapes, you bring some things in. That's really what Power BI is. Power BI is like a slide, and then you have built your data model. What do I mean by data model, please? Power pivots. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So you build your power pivots and stuff, you build that data model that's connected to everything, da, 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 da. Then you now have a slide. All you do is now drag maybe a chart, bring the chart in. Take sales, put it in the chart, and you now have sales, figure. Take product, put it in the chart, you now have sales by product. You understand? That's, how, that's the difference between Power BI and Excel. Excel is sell, sell, sell. Power BI is like PowerPoint. So Power BI is a combination of PowerPoint, Excel, and do all these data model power, this power that's, that's really what Power BI is. And it's so powerful. 
because at the end of the day, you publish your report online, and your users can only see, you see one version of your report. Just one version. They go online and see one version of your report. So everybody in your organization can see one report. Currently, when you finish your beautiful report in Excel, someone should tell me, how do you share it? <laughs> you share it by email. 99% of the world shares their report by email. And guess what happens when you email it? Your manager opens it. Oh, wow, wonderful. Oh, he just done my name right. Let's change his name. Save. The moment he saves, he has a different version than you. He now forces it to somebody else and does the same report forward. By the time the day runs out, that your report has probably become 40 <laughs> in everybody's desktop. That is terrible. And everybody does this. Final. Final, final. Final, 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 final. They get tired. They don't put a date. Listen, that is what we do. Everybody in the world does that. So we're kind of eliminating all of that and say, look, just have one version of the truth. Yeah? So that one version of the truth. Since people want it, you need a way that people can see it but not change it. And if they change it, it's changing in this place. So that's why you have one drive for business. That's why you have SharePoint. Yeah? So try and okay, put it there. Everybody shares it. So now in Excel, you see, you see all the people that are working on this part. You see their pictures. Yeah, if you share it properly. Right? But the best thing is just publish it online. So if you publish it online to powerbi.com. So you get it, pay your powerbi.com, it's a Microsoft site. You can either publish Power BI reports there or you publish Excel. You can even publish Excel there. So everybody sees it, plays with it, but you are the one that's changing it. And if you give somebody else rights to change it, they can change it. But just one file, not 1,000 files for one file. When they were investigating Enron, do you know Enron? Yeah. So most of the investigation was around Excel, Excel files. So it was Excel files that brought out all the ugliness. They could hide their things in the sources of the database, but guess what? What I told you already. Everybody, guess what? No, you can't touch this. But guess what? They sent me to folder as what? Text files. So they had all these massive Excel files all over, hundreds of thousands of Excel files that told the actual truth of what happened. So go and read the full report on Enron. You will see that. So they could have given this, delete this, delete this, sorry. We have sent thousands of Excel files and we saw all the information there. So that's in a nutshell the story of Power BI, how we got to Power BI. Questions, 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 questions. Before I jump into the demo. Questions. Questions, questions. questions. Question. So tea break is 10.30, some people are hungry, you know, I can see some hungry faces, sorry. We have a tea break at 10.30, so, questions? If you don't ask questions, I'm going to ask each person a question. <laughs> questions, so just give me general questions, anything, yes sir. So in terms of the presentation, how, how is Power BI different from Tableau, for example? Good, so how Power BI, Tableau is a different software, it's a different software, it's just Tableau does exactly, who knows Tableau by the way? Tableau is an excellent tool. It's exactly almost the same as Power BI, it's just a different technology, right? And a different company running it. So, it connects all the data sources to Tableau. But the only difference to me, and I have a history with Tableau, because I, we have two, two guests that are going to do something for us later. I tell us, and I'll tell you why. So that one up there is Microsoft, that's Power BI. This is Tableau there. And Click used to be, yeah, Click, Click is always at the bottom here. Fox Spot has kind of jumped into the leader quadrant. So the top right is called the leader quadrant. Top left is called challengers. Then you have niche players, and you have vision markets. So Microsoft is up there. And I think the main reason is the rate of updates is ridiculous. So they update Power BI every week. And it's not just small updates, big, big, big updates every single week. Let me show you the updates for just uh, September. So what happens is Power BI desktop, which all of you have, is what they call the local plant. So that's like your Excel on your desktop, ready to build something and then publish. Okay, that's Power BI desktop, which you have, right? That Power BI desktop, they wait for a month, gather all the updates they've done on the Power BI Online and then feed it into Power BI Desktop once a month. So this is 
September updates. This is an update that came last week. So these are all the updates just on one month on public. Yeah? So what do they do? Reporting color, color and text classes and themes. So they allow you to do more things in themes. You use JSON, this is, it's a language called JSON, you use JSON to create your own theme directly in Power BI. So you have a theme for your company, you build your own wonderful themes yourself, right? And they make it easier for you to do that. Then a personalized visualization pane on theme default visuals. So currently, there are default visuals to the right, especially some visuals you may not like, you like a custom visual for your line chart. If you don't like the default visual, you can remove it now. Before you couldn't do that, you can remove it, right? So see all the objects, quite a lot. This is just one month. And this is a, not the full list, this is just the summary, okay? So summary for one month. There's no application or company out there that can compete. Because guess what the updates are based on? I mentioned it earlier, it's not about what user voice. So we have employed, we have basically employed researchers, one billion researchers worldwide, to complain and complain and complain and complain. Then those complaints at the top, that's what they do. Before they used to have board meetings, oh, how can we improve this? The less thing, less thing, let's do solve it. No. This one is, what have they said we should do? And they just continue doing it. And they do it at a rapid, rapid pace. So it's going to be very hard for Tableau to compete, which is why Tableau's share price unfortunately is crashed and they sold to who? To a Salesforce. So Salesforce bought them out. Right? And yes, they will be stronger with Salesforce, but it become a niche product for that. Power BI is connected to everything, including Tableau, you get data and stuff. So that's my own thoughts, really. And again, so that's what, so nice question, nice question. Any other question, please? Yes, sir. Now, my question is, how best can we learn this tool and the questions below structure of Power BI and that? So what's the best way to learn them? What do you learn them? Good. So, the key thing to learn anything, I like trial and error. Trial and error is one of the best ways to learn. Okay? Trial and error is one of the best ways to learn. The problem is we don't try. So there's no error. Yeah? The more errors you make, the better you get. Okay? So what's your error rate? If you calculate how many errors did I make today? If there is very few, that means you're not really pushing yourself. Yeah? You need to, you need to create more errors. But not in the way that I create the same errors. Different. Create more errors, create the same error. Creating the same error, something is wrong. <laughs> Probably need some. <laughs> so creating more errors is key. So trial and error is perfect. But please, guide trial and error. Don't just trial and error. Guide it. So what I'm giving you, as small as it sounds, this is the fundamentals, understanding of how they built this tool. So obviously, when you're trying to get data, what do you think of first? I want to get data from somewhere. What are you thinking of first? What tool are you thinking of first? How to get data? Because I want to do this part here. I want to get data. What tool are you thinking of? What tool are you thinking of? You should be thinking of Power Query. Okay? How to get data? How to get data? Power Query. So what you need to do is a mind map. A mind map. So that mind map will help you. How to get data is Power Query. In your head, your room, I'm using Power Query. Right? Mind map. So it's like your mind. You're building a mind map of how, how you're going to use this tool. So that's the first thing. Always use Power Query to get it. Now, unfortunately, the names are different. In Excel, Power Query is called Get and Transform. We have the latest version of Excel. We see a section called Get and Transform. That is Power Query. In Power BI, it's called Power Query. I think it's called Power Query. I don't want to say Okay, so it's called Power Query in Power BI. Okay, it's the same technology, guys. So if you learn, if you learn this technology in Excel, it's exactly the same in Power BI. No difference. You can, in fact, you can build the whole thing in Excel. Open Power BI, flow Power BI to Excel. Power BI we go into Excel, go and look for data model. If you find it, you look for Power BI. You just pull everything into Power BI. Because it's the same technology. How many of us use cloud-based technologies? Who knows Azure? Okay, so Azure. So in Azure, Power Query is also in Azure. It's called Data Flows. So I want to give you those names. So it's called Data Flows in the cloud. 
when you want to do Power Query in the cloud, it's called data flows. When you get data flows, that is Power Query. When you hear in Excel, get and transform. That is what? Power Query. When you have Power Query in Power BI, it is Power Query. Same technology. So that's what? So now you've sorted the data side. Yes? The next thing you need to sort is that your data, go together. Your data must follow certain rules. What are the rules for how your data should look? All right? Because before you bring in your data, it has to, it has to be structured. So you don't have empty rows like this, you have something scattered like that. It must follow a certain structure. Anybody here know what we call the seven golden rules? Yeah? Yeah, yeah so we, we, we in our training, we just coined something called the seven golden rules. So you might be honest, but can say it's okay. So can you note the seven golden rules of data? How should your data be structured? So it's going to tell us just seven simple rules. If you look at your data and it doesn't follow all those rules, something is wrong. So can you throw up one? No soft totals. There shouldn't be soft totals in there. No soft totals or totals anywhere in your data. That's one. It may sound strange, but don't worry, just keep it. No totals or soft totals anywhere in your data. That's one. No empty columns. No empty columns in your data. So if you have a heading, it's not an empty column. The whole column empty. You have data here, empty column, another data here. No. No empty columns, yes? No empty rows. No empty rows. No empty rows. So don't have empty rows. You know, there's a difference between data and report. Take note. Data is different from report. This is data or data. So no empty rows. That's number three. So three that he knows well. Who can remember any other one? So he said no totals or subtotals. No empty columns. No empty rows. One row of headings. Your headings must be in just one row. One row of headings, right? One row of headings, right? Your dates. Dates must be in a single column. Dates must be in a single column, right? One column for dates. Only one column. Are we there? This must be in a single column. <laughs> then another one, no obstruction anywhere around your data. What do you mean by obstruction? You just you type, oh good, very good. Something just some funny stuff you type around your data. Especially in Excel. No obstruction. Don't put any obstruction anywhere around your data. Then the last rule is every data type or, or data must have its own unique column. Just every data type or every unique data entry must have its own column. Now, I'm talking to Excel guys especially. What do we mean? Every, unique, every data type or every unique data must have its own column. Sometimes you look at the column, at the head you see Lagos State, or you see Nigeria. Then under you see Lagos, Abuja, Kano. Then under again you see Cameroon. You get on the same column. So that column contains country data, and state data, not can't have to, they have to be in separate columns. So those are your seven golden rules. Once you have those rules, your data is ready. Once your data is ready, nearly everything else follows. Okay? But I'm told we need to go for tea break now. So when we come back from tea break, we are starting your demo. So today, let me give you a general framework of how we're working. Every month, we're going to take one element, one or two indices from the world. Okay? One or two indices from the world, and then we'll build a data model around that. Last month we took a proxy for um, what was it? A proxy for luxury. Hello, are we together guys? Yeah. Wanted to understand where are the luxurious countries in the world. Which country has the most luxury? So we needed a proxy. What do I mean by proxy? Something that can kind of be a, a place of luxury. Can someone just shout out one you think could work? One metric, one data that could work? Could show luxury? Sorry? Cars per Cars per Cars per capita, yes. Cars per capita. You have the total number of cars in this country divided by the total number of people in the country. Perfect metric for luxury. Give me even higher luxury than that. Private jet. Private jet. That one. That one is way too much. That's way up in If you divide it by population, it gets So we used flights, total number of flights per year. Right? 
how many flights per year in this country, how many flights per year, divided by population, so flights per capita. And that's what you now use to build a little model around it. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to do wealth and health. So we need a proxy for wealth, a proxy for health. And then we're going to add it to the data model. So which is why I asked, nobody is here from last week, so we're going to build a fresh thing from start. Someone's here. Oh, someone's here from last week. Oh, nice. Hold on. Let me give you a hand. Okay, so we're going to build something, a proxy for wealth and a proxy for health. Can someone shout out what you think we could use for health and what we could use for wealth? We have all the nations. I want to analyze them from 1800 to date. People need for health. Yes, for health. Sorry. For health. People living above the age of 65. Good. People living above the age of how do you how do you know that? Perfect. So life expectancy, excellent. And guess what? We also came to the same conclusion. Your data is life expectancy. That's what we're using as a proxy for. Health, thank you very much. Nice, nice, well done. And then wealth, who can give us a proxy for wealth? GDP per capita. Yeah, so again, that's also what we chose. So GDP per capita. So we're going to get data on GDP per capita. I'll tell you the source. We will clean the data so that it follows the seven golden rules. We get another data from, what's it called? Uh, yeah. Life expectancy, we clean it to follow the seven golden rules, right? And then we now bring them together, we try and merge them together. So we kind of create a column that's exactly the same size. And let me even tell you what we will need. What we need is we need to know all this life expectancy for all the countries in the world, for all the dates from maybe 1800 to date. Okay? So think about it. All the countries in the world, for all the time in the world that we kind of know or have data for. Yeah, so the columns we need, before we go for TV, let's agree together. What are the columns we need in this data? Because that's how you should think. Please don't jump into a software before you think. <laughs> Seriously, especially PowerPoint. Can you just jump to PowerPoint and look at PowerPoint? Uh, okay, don't do that. Get a piece of paper. Put your brain down, yes? And then after you plan, go in. So we're planning now, before we go for tea break and come back. Let's think. Life expectancy for all the countries in the world, all the dates in the world, or whatever. And uh, health, which is um, well, GDP per capita. So what will our column, our, our, what will the columns look like? What will the data look like for the you know, life expectancy? What do you mean? Column one will have what? Column two will have what? Column three will have what? Column one, dates. Okay, so column one, dates. Column two, column three, perfect. Life expectancy. Okay. The the column three would be Okay. No, so that's the table. No, you are in the right spot. The name of the the column. Everything there will be life expectancy. Yes. So, so let me rewind. We said the column for the dates. So we have we have the year 1800, 1801, 1802, or we have the date, 1st of January 1800, because date has to be date. 1st of January uh, 1990, 1st of January 1991, 1st of January 1992. Good, date, good. The next column you are right, country. We need to know what country it is, isn't it? Nigeria, Nigeria, Nigeria will happen maybe 200 times because 1800 to date, how many days is that? How many years is that? Anyway, so you have Nigeria for 1800, Nigeria for 1801, Nigeria for 1802, yeah? So excellent, date, country. Yeah. Then you said population. Population. Gender. Well, depending on how you are presenting your data. Yes. So it can be in any form. But I think if you have to follow this, you or me, how we are. So I think it has to follow that. So the third column, because remember what we said we're going to do at the end. This table for life experience. We're going to have another table for um, wealth. We'll add it under. So we want one table that has everything. Eventually, by six months from now, we'll have all sorts of metrics on the wall. Wealth, health, this, this, that, that, that. And then we're going to do AI. So maybe in month four, there's an AI engine. We're going to tell the AI engine to go and explain what's going on in the world. Do you understand? Think about it. There's AI out there. So we want to get as much data as possible and let AI tell us why we are where we are, especially in Nigeria, right? So that's the idea. Yeah? So we're gathering data on health and wealth. I'm going to put it on there. So he's right. You have dates, 
country, then and let's call, we'll call it indicator. Maybe indicator ID. So this indicator, what's this indicator we're getting? Oh, it's life expectancy, life expectancy, life expectancy. So yes, it will repeat itself, but it's explaining what we're looking at. And then what's the last thing? The actual value itself. Because that 1975, Nigeria, life expectancy was 22 years. Do you understand? No, hopefully not. <laughs> but, but you understand what I mean? So the perfect data is going to be four columns. Because dates must be what? In a single column. Your report can have dates this way, but data must never do that. Your dates must be this way. That's key. So when we come back, we're using Power Query, connect to some raw data, bring it in, clean it, make it look like that. That's our first thing. After that, we build a data model and we build a report. Right? Let's go for Tibri. Okay. <laughs> Have you done this? Yeah. Can we all see this? So based on our plan, if you check what we created during that time, how many columns do we say we need? Four, four, four. four. We need four. The first column is what? Eight. 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 Second column is what? Country. Country. Yeah. Okay. The third column is what? Indicators. Indicator what? Indicator ID. Okay, and the fourth color is what? Value. Value. So we're looking at this data now. How do we do that to look exactly like our plan? So that means we need to clean this data into bits. This data is going to turn out. Remember when we said something about seven million rules of data? If you look at this data very well now, it's breaking some rules. Yes, Which rule is that? Well, all the data. All the dates, so according to the rule, all dates must be in what? In a single column. But you look at this data very well, you can see that all dates they are across the rows. Can you see them? These are dates. These are dates. 1800, 1801, 1803. So we need to look for a way to bring this date inside one column, then all these values inside one column. That means we have to achieve how many columns? Three. Three. So we need one more. The last one is what? So we now need to add another column called indicator name. Then we'll fill it with um, this is income, right? Yeah. So we'll fill it with income. Okay, so if I open the second data in that exercise, which is life expectancy. So let me open it. Okay. Can you open yours too? And have a look at the data. If you can see the second data, you can see that they are the same structure, right? So we need to clean the income and the life expectancy to make sure we have these four columns, right? Okay, so can we go to Power BI now? Or Excel? <coughs> so for those that are using Excel, so please close these files first. Because what you're going to do now is, what tool do we use to get data, please? Data query. Anytime you think data, think query. So Power Query is what we're going to use to connect to this and clean it up. So it has to be closed when you're connecting to it. So close those Excel files to just open. Can we close everything? For those that are using Excel, can you open the new Excel? And those that are using Power BI, can you open Power BI? Okay, so for me, I'm just going to excel up here. I'm able to explain it to you. Please call themselves guys old school. Oh. <laughs> 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 so okay, excel. So do we have Excel and Power BI open? Yes. Everybody? This side? This side? This side? Okay, for those that are using old school, which is Excel. Right? <laughs> Excel, that's it. Okay, Excel. For those that are using Excel, right? Can you go to data tab? Data tab. Data tab, you can decide your formula tab. 
Okay, this one work for all the Excel I saw. Some previous Excel will not work, so don't bother. <laughs> Excel is um, Excel. Some 2013, now what? Don't judge about that. 2016, what? 2016. You do get and transform data. Right? You get and transform data. So you click on get data. For 2016, you click on new query. Right? So the file that we are connected to is what? CSV. Is it CSV? Is it Excel? Excel. 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 Which one are we going to Which one are we going to that we pick Right? Well, let's use Excel. Let's see if we can pick it with Excel. So for Excel, guys, go to get data. 2019 or 2016, new query. Then do from file and from work. For Power BI, for Power BI, in your own tab here, can you see get data? Get to your home tab. Home. Home tab. Look at the home tab. Get data. Get data. Get data. Get data. Yeah. Can you see the get data? Click the drop down. Can you see various connections that you can connect to? Right? You can connect to Excel, Power BI dataset, SQL, analysis, text file, web. Can you click on more? Click on more. For Power BI, click on more. So with this pathway, you can connect to so many things like David Estate. But for now, we are just connected to Excel. Right? So click on Excel. Excel. And click connect. Excel, you click connect. So now navigate to where you have that file in your system. So for me, I have it on my desktop. Excel. Excel people too, navigate to where you have that file in your system. You can have it on my desktop. Um, it's called September. Exercise. But I can't see it. I can't see it, right? So that, that file is not Excel. It's not Excel. <laughs> so can we go back? Just close it. Close it, right? Have you closed it? Have you closed it? Close it for that? Can we close the folder? Let's see CSV now. Have you closed it? Okay. okay, so let's do get data again. Get data, get data, Excel, you now see that already, right? Then can you see text plus CSV? Text plus CSV. Can we click on that? Text or CSV. Then now navigate to where you have the exercise file. Mine is in desktop. I can see them now. Can we all see the part? Can you see the part? Can you see this part? Yes. Can you see the part? Yes. Can you see the part? Yes. So which one are we picking first? Should we pick income or life expectancy first? Income. Income, right? Yep. Okay, so click on income. Income. Then click open. Click open. Can we all say this? Excel and Fabia. Both Excel and Fabia. Can we all say this? This room. Can we see this? So now, I have three options here. I have load, I have transform data, and I have cancel. Which one are we using? So please, does everybody, everybody have any different style? Apart from load, transform data, 
what different things do you see? That is, that is so that is good. So don't be scared. Every time they update, they like changing things, okay? Do you understand? So it's the same. So I know some people have different things. Yeah, this is something So we have three options. We have no, we have edit or transform data, and we have cancel. Which one are we using? We are transforming all entities, right? Because if you click on no, to take the data to have the But we want to transform that data. We need to clean it because data is not clean, right? So let's click on edit or transform. Transform here. Click on edit or transform. Click on edit or transform data. Then you can see this interface, this pathway. Can we also see this? Before we continue, I want to be sure we all have this. We have done this. I need to make it readable for 
Five years. Five years. Okay, thank you for that. I don't know if most of us use fiber table here. No. No. For those that use fiber table, can you explain something that there's a difference between the data and the report? Right? So most of the time, people use fiber table for their reports. So they pivoted this data. This is just like a report. Because you have the year across the room. They are reporting all these values based on all these years. Right? So we need to pivot this year to bring it back inside one column. So there's a command in your transform tab that can do that. Right? But, but the reason why we will not select all, because somebody said we should select all the affected columns, right? But we will not do that. Because if you select all the affected columns and you compile us, what if you have a new data? It will be new year's coming. So it's not a pivot that. It's only a pivot based on what you selected, right? So for country now, country is fine. But all other columns, they are not fine, right? Yeah. So to do that, come to country. Just right click on country like this. Right click on country. Do you see a command called on pivot other columns? On pivot other columns. Yes. yes. Right? Any other column that you see, on pivot it. That's just the command. Can we click on it? On pivot other columns. Can we see this? So that what on pivot is just for you is to bring all the areas into one column and all the values into one column. So now we have achieved three of our column. Now, uh, come, do you allow this place before continue? Yes. Do you apply to that? Yeah. Okay, I want to make sure, I want to be sure we have this three colors first before continue. Do you have this color? Everybody here? Yeah. Okay. Do you have this? Okay, so based on, our, based on our plan, the first column in our plan is this, right? <coughs> so the second one is what? Country. So we have here already. Right? Can you double click this header and rename it as, as here? Just double click the header and rename it as here. You can't type, right? Since we can't type in Parkway, how can we bring in the indicator ID? Well, so we need the indicator ID. So, what indicator is this? This is an income, right? Yes. So this is income. So we need to look for a way to bring in a column that we have income all the way from the top to the last row. So how can we achieve that? Okay, she had a column. Okay, she had a column. I should go to add column tab, right? Okay, so um, we add column tab. So what should we do? Can we all come to add column tab? Can we go to add column tab? Can we go to Can we go to add column tab? So we don't waste time. Can you go to add column tab? Can you go to add column tab? Yes. I mean add column tab. Yes. So if you remember when David was explaining this pathway, he said this pathway speak one language. What language is that? Yes. M. Right? M language. Right? So to write any M language in pathway, you need this custom column. Look at it. Can you see this custom column? Right? Yes. You want to write a language. Please click on that custom column. Custom column. Custom column. Are you there? Yeah. So do you can use your custom column very well. Up here we have new column name. What's the name of our new column? 
Okay. This group is a uh, left over group. Okay. Okay. We have four groups. This, this, and three, and four. Now, what, what we're going to do is, while you're going to go through the step, but you are the ones going to shout it out. Exactly what you did before is what you're going to do again. So we're testing recall. <laughs> so the steps have to come from group one first. The next step will come from this group. Anybody can shout it out in this group. Then this group. Then this group. Just as soon as we're around. Okay, so I'll start from here. Then we can't force it. You don't answer how to do this. Okay, fine. Five seconds is fine. We'll go to the next group. Okay, so I have live expectancy now. What's the first thing to do here? Go to transform tab. Can we all go to transform tab? Are you there? Then click on use first row as headers. Okay, so go to what's the next step? Is everybody on step one? Definitely, we all done it first. Okay, so what's the next step? On pivot for that column. How can we do that? You right click on column. Okay, can we all right click on country? Then you go down to on pivot for that column. Right click on country and click on five dots for that column. Five dots for that column. Do we all have this? Yes. Good thing it was the next step. How can we add the color? Go to add color. 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 Let's click on custom color. Let's click on custom color. And then what? So remember, purple is very, very case sensitive. What do you use to name your color the other time? It has to be exactly the same. Right? So can you type the same indicator ID that you type the other time? Indicator ID. Indicator ID. Indicator ID. Okay, so next thing. Four. Okay, then you write it from the line. 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 Yeah. So don't think this article and uh, remain here. That's what you get. Yes, we need the article to call it here. We need the article to call it here. Okay, so we know what to do from here. So we need to rearrange this color we get to, right? So, here yes, should be in which color? Yes, color. Yes, color. Right? Yes, yes, color. Let's drag here to the first color. Let's drag here to the first color. Country should be in the second color. So, where should the indicator be? Third color. Can we drag it to the third color as well? So we should have this. So we continue. Do we have this data? Yes. Yeah. Check the first one. Are they the same structure? Your color made are the same thing. Compare the two. Just check the first one, check the second one. Check the first and second. Are they the same? They are the same, right? So what we are doing now, we need to look for a way to merge the data together because they are actually the same thing. They are the same structure. We need to look for a way to put them together, right? We don't need to report on this data separately. We can put all our data in the same page, just like what they did explain in Excel. Now, in Excel, you only need how many sheets? One. How many sheets? Three. The first one is what? Data. First one is what? Data. Second one is what? 
Control. The third one is what? Report. So you need three sheets. Data, control, most of the time you don't need control. Let us say data, report. Right? If I load this data now, that means I have how many data? I have how many? Two now. I have income and I have what? Life expectancy. So because there's a general rule that all your data should be in the same place for your analysis to be very, very easy. So I need to look for a way to match this data together to be what? To be one. Right? Yeah. And it's very easy in Parkway. In Excel, what you do is you copy, you move it down, you paste it under, in Parkway, you don't need that. Right? So we just do here something called append. We want to append this second data with the first one. Right? Yeah. Okay. So click on the first data. Click on the first one. Click on the first data. You want to be top, which is your income. Click on income. Have you clicked on income? Everyone? Income. So now go to own tab. Go to own tab. <laughs> own tab. Go to own tab. Are you in own tab? Yes. So to your top right, can you see something called append quiz? Yes. Append quiz. Yes. To your top right. Okay, so click the drop down for our pen queries. Click the drop down for our pen queries. Are you there? Yes. So you can see two options for that. We have our pen queries and we have our pen queries as name. Right? Should we have pen as name or just one? Okay, so let's have pen as name. Our pen queries as name. Sorry, what's the difference between the two? Okay, so the difference between the two is that the first one, when you are pen, it's going to add the second table with your first table. Or if you do append queries as me, to create a separate table for you that will be in the So which are we using? So we're using append queries as me. Append queries as me. So can you see this dialog box? Yes. Everyone? Yes. Good day. Can you see this? Group B, can you see this? Yes. Group C, can you see this? Yes. Okay, so you have a pen. You have two tables. Since you are using only two tables, you have primary table and you have table to append to the primary table. Yes. So in your primary table, we have income per person. The, then the second table is what? Yes. And you click the drop down for the second one and pick live expectancy. Which way have selected it to income of the large expectancy below? Have you done that? Can we click? Okay. Okay. Can we click? Okay. We should have another data now called append one. We have append one. Okay, so can we rename it? What should we call it? What should we call it? What should we call it? Health and wealth. Health and wealth. What do you want to add another indicator next time? Income type. You want to add another indicator, maybe transport, there's an input. Income, wealth, and transport. We should call it income. Okay, let's just call it data. Let's call it data. Data. Just call it data. Yeah. Call it data, then you enter on your keyboard. Enter on your keyboard. Call it data and enter on your keyboard. Have you entered? So every time you are working with Parkway and you are cleaning your data, always make sure that before you load your data, always check your time. Right? There is data time. Because if you look at this column right now, this year column, Beside the year, you can see something like A, B, C. Right? Can you see that A, B, C? So what does that mean? It means that this color is a test color. Right? If you click the drop down, if you click this A, B, C, can you click that A, B, C? The A, B, C you are looking at, can you click on it? Click on the A, B, C. Now you're looking at. So what do you see when you click? It's a different data type, right? In years, you always be 
a test because it's like a code and you can't solve a, your phone number. Can you solve your phone number? See what it makes sense. Can I solve my own phone number with you? See what it makes sense. So it's a number, but I can't solve it because it's a code. If you account number, can I solve it? No. I can't because it's a code. Right? So a year is just like a code. So you just need to change it to number. Because if this year is a number, when you get to Power BI or Excel, you should sum everything. And that's not what we need, right? So you have to make sure year is what? Year is what? Text. Okay, so that's what we need. Sorry, can I change the Can I go? What if you made it the end of time? Uh, it's fine, but here it should be there. There should be it. So you look at the data type very long. You have decimal, you have date, you have date and time, you have date, right? Yes. So date is always date. Here is text. What is text? Okay, so country is what? Text. text. Indicator ID is what? Text. text. It should be text. For present in it's showing end. Yes. Because you have ABC one two three, is that what you have? Yes. Click that ABC and change it to text. Click that ABC and change it to text. Change it to text. Have you done that? Yes. Then our value should be what? Zero number or decimal or fifth decimal. Decimal. Right? So, and if you check your data type very well now, it's already in decimal. Okay, so now go back to your own tab. That means we are done with cleaning up data in Power BI. We are done. So we are, we are sending this data to Power BI. Right? Power BI is done with its own cleaning. So can you go to own tab? Click on your own tab. Click on your own tab. Okay, so click on your own tab. Are you in your own tab? So now do close and apply. Can you see close and apply here? We can close and apply. For Excel, we have close and 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 close Go to all tab and click on close and apply. Your own tab here, can you close and apply? Up here. Look up, 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 up. Sorry. Can you see close and apply? Up here, your own tab. So click on close and apply. Then for Excel, you see close and loop. So you should be in Power BI now. Are you in Power BI? And are you in Excel? Yes. But for those that are in Excel, Excel will bring your data as a what? As a table. Did you see a table? For yes. Excel. Okay, so that's fine. Are you part of the Yes. So that means our data is now ready. Sorry, excuse me. How about you getting into two of them? Close and load and close and load. Yes. Okay, so basically, in Excel, you see close and load there, you see close and load. So in Excel, really, you know the limitation of Excel inside of rules, right? Yes. Which is 1 million plus. If your data is more than 1 million, sorry, so many people don't bring in that data to Excel. Yes. Because you have to use Excel to get that data. Yes. 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 They just connect to that data, right? So if you can close and load to, you can actually select a connection only so that you won't take that table to Excel. And you can also load to your data model, right? Well, so for us, we'll be using the maybe Python table, you can just do that and load. It's fine. So we've, we've kind of run in the data. So let's build a small report at least. Okay, so let's do the report. So 
typically everything you've done now is automated, you don't need to do it again, it's done. Yeah. If you have new data, you get new data, go and dump it in that same place with the same name and refresh to come in. Yeah? So that's Power Query has done its job. The key thing about Power Query is once you bring the data, and new data comes, you don't need to keep on doing it. It's done. So now we just do a quick report so we can analyze health and wealth. But remember guys, we are using data, not income and life expectancy, right? Yeah. Or maybe we should just add that. So we're not receiving it in our report team. No. Look up, 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 Go to a relationship view. Up here, down here. In power here, you have to be right? So go to this your relationship view. So see all your table. Let's know where to get that again. Okay, look up, look up. In Power BI, you have three view. You have report, data, and relationship of model view. So click on the third one, which is model view or relationship view. Are you there? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah an Excel before. For Excel, um, yeah, but you didn't know yeah, it's top right answer. Top right. Okay, so for Power BI, this is what you are going to do. Just right click or think of. Right click on this income. Right click on the income. Income table. Can you see I in report view? I in report view. Can you see it? Click on it. So sorry for the Excel guys. You don't the Power Query. I think you just need to watch now because obviously the visualization is completely different, right? So at least you've done the Power Query in Excel. That's the limit for now of Excel. And then you need to do completely different things to now do reporting. So just watch. Okay, so for Power BI, right click on your income and do I do report view. I do report view. Have you done that? Sorry, no, sorry. Yes, yes, yes. Just write the end. Write the end like this. You should see I the report view. You go go from your relationship. Yes, for life and sentence and income. Two. Just I the two. So we will not be using the data from the income and the because for example, I'm not using this table, I can hide that table from my report. So that table is not disturbing. So you can make a mistake. You can come pick your value from life expectancy and your model will be funny. So guys, another question. So someone told us a question which is valid. So when you finish your power query, you can actually disable it loading so it doesn't load. Because currently it's loaded. But this is how you now hide, you know? This is this is like a programmer. You know, in the beginning I said in Excel, you type into Excel, you're a programmer. So you are now a programmer. The users, what the users will use is that one at the top called the report view. Yeah? So that report view, that's what they will use. But you don't want them to see what you don't want them to touch, isn't it? So we're hiding this so that they don't see it. But if we're in PowerPoint, we'll just say, hey, don't load this, don't load this, only load this one. You understand? And then it wouldn't have loaded in the first place. Where do you have loaded? This one we are doing, hiding it so that they don't see. So that's just all we're trying to achieve, okay? Right. Okay, so can you go back to your report? I'm just trying to do a report. Without your data and Can you show one small report at least? So okay. how does visualization work? Okay, so look up. How can you have here? Online Excel. Can you see visualization of it? Yeah. So in Excel, you have a list of tables, right? And you go to your, maybe in chart, you pick your recommended chart, or you pick a chart. But for Power BI, you just have all your visuals here, right? So I can pick any chart, for example. For example, if I pick, uh, let me pick this uh, line chart, right? If I pick this line chart, for example, can you see it's showing empty, there's nothing inside. But if I click on this chart, to your top right here, you can see assets, legend, values, and two tips. Right? So access is what you want to have as your access. Then the value is what you want to have as your value. Right? So for this one, can we pick a line chart? Let's just do this together. Pick a line chart. The line chart should be up here. Pick a line chart. Pick a line chart. Yeah. I'm going to pick a line chart. So in this 
line chart, right? So can we draw um, here to our axis? Just drag it, just like your pad button, right? Draw it here to your axis, or you can just click, right? Or you can just click. Have you done that? No, Look up, look up now. I have a line chart now, right? Yeah. And I want to put something inside this line chart. So click the line chart first. So you have to click on the line chart first, right? But let me even use a... Okay, let's use the line chart and I'll use a table as an example. So if you click on the line chart first, I want to plot something in this chart. I want to see something, right? And what I want to see is year and value. Right? I just need to go to your data and tip here. Then tick value. Tick here, tick value. Tick here, tick value. Can you see this chart? Can you see this chart? Also, you can pick any of these visuals. Can you even pick a table? There's a table visual there. So just play around with any visual that you can see there and create a report for like five minutes. Play around with all those visuals that we have. Just play around with it.
some people don't have device. Okay. It's a funnel, right? Yes. Can you select it? Yes. Select that funnel. Yes. So make sure you click the white space. Select funnel and select indicator. Then select indicator. Right? Select funnel and select indicator. Are we there? So you can make it bigger. You know, sometimes very tiny. So it's just like Excel. In Excel, we used to do right-click uh, format cells. And then we increase the font size. There is something like format there. I don't know if you can just show. Just increase the indicator size. OK, so look up. If you click on that, your slides are very well here. So your format should be by your field here, beside your field. Under visualization, Under right in the middle. Format. Yeah. Click it, you will see a search box. Search. Yeah. Not it, then just type size. 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 Just type size in the search. Okay. And you can see text like size. Slice header and item. So what you want to increase yes, is the item. So increase the size yeah. of the item. So just increase the size, continue increasing until they're happy with the size. Can you see size and item? So we increase the size. So can you see it? Can we see the size? Yes. Yeah. Great. So pick income or life expectancy, any one of them, not both of them. So just select one. Life expectancy or income. Right? So obviously you have many countries there. Even though time is kind of up, I would like you to bring in continent. You know, countries are too many in the world. Okay. If we can bring in continents, we can do analysis by continents, don't you? Yeah. Do you think you're up for that? Yeah. Just five minutes. No, we're going to overshoot by five minutes. Because when you have plenty of things like that, you can't really see much. When you bring continent, we can see Africa and see how Africa is doing. Yes? Yes? Yeah. Right, so can we bring in continent? Okay, so let's now bring in the new data. So guys, look up. So let's bring in continent. And then what we're going to do is plug continent to our data, you know? Because right now we have a four column data, isn't it? So if you bring in continent, what is related to continent in that four columns? Sorry? In that four columns, country is related to continent, isn't it? So you basically, you've already understood relationships. So we need another table that has country and continent. Then you said country is what's related, isn't it? All we need to do is connect them. Once we connect them, now we can do analysis by continent. So we're going to bring in a table with country, continent, connect them, and we have new in new uh, context. Right? So can we do that? Okay, so like the country table inside the exercise file. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So in your home tab here, let's just get data. Get data. Okay. So we are getting the data from text. From text file. From text. From text. Or CSV. Get data from text or CSV. Then can you see countries and continents? Yes. Please open it.
take notes so you can read yourself. But there's one other thing I will tell you online how to do, not there. On the forum, I'm going to show you another thing because we're going to do a correlation analysis. Want to correlate life expectancy? Want to see if life expectancy can explain our uh, wealth? Or wealth can explain our health? Do you get it? Yeah. But we're going to do that one online, not there. Okay, it's good time. So that would be interesting because you have health and wealth. So if you're healthier, maybe you're wealthier. If you're wealthier, are you healthier? Right? But let's do this. So those that don't have, just watch. Just watch. Yeah. Okay, so if you have notes of transfer data and cancel again, or head, yeah. right? click on transfer data because we need to check that table. We'll show you that in this table. Click on transfer data. Okay. Or head. Yeah. Can we see this? Yes. Can we see this? Okay, so if you look at this table very well, we have continent name, continent code, and country name. But if you look at this country name very well, there's something wrong. What's it? For country name, for country name, there's something wrong. What's that? Yeah, for one of the characters after the main country. Yeah, so after the main country, there are other characters. This is how that list stands. There's comma. And there's a stand in front of the comma. Right? So we need to look for a way to remove that. So we can now remove that very fast. Just go to your transform tab. Just go to your transform tab. Go to your transform tab. Are you there? Yes. Up there, can you see extract? Extract. So you can see length, first character, last character, range, next before the limiter, next after the limiter. What are we using? So let's use text before the limiter, then we put that comma as the limiter. So it's no text. Okay? So click on text before the limiter. Text. So do you understand why? Any questions? So we're removing the limit of being something breaking things up. When you write your name and sonny, what breaks your name and sonny? Space. Space. So space is a delimiter. Currently, the comma is the delimiter, isn't it? So we're using left and then what's it? Left before or text before the delimiter. So click on that. Click on text before the delimiter. And what's our delimiter? Can you type comma? Type comma. And click OK. Just type comma. Click OK. Type comma and click OK. Have you type comma and click OK? So you can see now that there's no excess uh, of structure. Okay? So we have the main point. For those that are in the market, I think that's Antarctica. So there's no limit on Chicago. Okay, so the country there, any dimension, right? We are adding something to our table, right? As a dimension, as another table. So whenever we are adding something, like, like a table to another table, we have to make sure there's no duplicate. Right? Because it has to be unique. Yes. So that this thing we talk to the other thing. So we have to make sure there's no duplicate in this country day. Right? Yes. So we can be able to plug it to the first thing. So click on this country day. Country day. Right? Go to your home tab. Home tab. Are you in home tab? Yes. So to your top right, I need to remove rows. Remove rows. Click the drop down. Can you see remove duplicate? Yes. Please click on it. Or you can as well just right click. You still see remove duplicate. Have we done that? Yes. Okay, so now let's. Can you rename it? So can you rename this table as. Uh, what we call it? Continent. Country data. Country data. 
which is data. Data. Which is data? Have you done that? Have you renamed it? Yes. Okay, so let's close and apply again. Close and apply. Close and apply. Is it really clear? Because you rush, where all of them are just, they are text. So there's no value, maybe you know that. That's why you don't have to do it. Have you closed and applied? Yes. Have you all closed and applied? So this is the important step, guys. Final step, final step. Let's look up. Look up, look up. Have you closed and applied? So you have this. But if you look up, look up, look up, you have two data here now. I have country data and I have data itself. But this data, I want to be sure maybe, maybe they are speaking to each other, right? In your PABI here, this relationship view that we went to the other time, can you click on it? Or model view. Relationship view or model view. Relationship view or model view. Relationship view or model view. Are you there? Yeah. Smile is creating the connection. Does it not create any connection? Yes. yes. For some people, it's not creating any connection, right? Yes. So you have to be sure maybe this part here is connecting the right thing. Because most of the time, you are the one that controls your technology. You always trust them sometimes, right? So for this one, we need to connect data to country data, right? So just click on this line to cross check what is connecting to what. Click on the line to cross check what is connecting to what. So is country connected to country name? Yes. That means we are fine. But if you look at this thing very well, see connected to all of our hidden table. You guys see the hidden table, right? Should we remove it? The connection will just hidden. Remove it. Remove it. Okay? So to remove it, just click on the line. Right click and you see delete. Right click, then click delete. Yeah, delete it, then do it for the second one. Make sure you are only connected to the data. Okay, so do you have data and country data now? Yeah. I cannot go back to my report view. I'll pick the slider again, the same slider you picked the other time. Then you now take continent. Continent name. Continent name. So now I can filter by Africa. I can check by Asia, by Europe, by North America. So the report is now making sense now. So all you do is select your filter and select continent name. And now it's connected to your report. Can you see that? So now we can limit our reports by which continent you want to see. Okay, to Africa. Okay. So if we had population data, we would have just given it, which we had last month. Okay? So everybody, um, what we're going to do is we're going to build out this solution. Are we, are we, are we together, guys? We're going to add last month's data to this month's data. And in the next, maybe next week, you're going to see the full last month and this month inside one part. The next month, they're going to add more, and we add more, and we add more. So eventually, we are building like a tool that we can now eventually use AI. We now use AI to explain our world. Okay? So I would like us to give a hand to Wale and to David. Our time is really up, we're taking 10 more minutes off. Uh, the 